Hey, shalom, shalom, everyone. Rabbi Yehuda here. I've had a couple passages that's been reverberating inside my brain and bouncing off the walls of my heart. been thinking and meditating about it uh, this past week, and I thought I'd share them with you. Whether it'll ring a bell or strike a chord, I don't know. But uh, the passage I'm about to read was referred to me through this devotional book I've been reading to my daughter. And I've been reading to her from the Living Bible, which is a paraphrase rather than a translation, but since it's in everyday, plain English, simple, you know, USA Today style of writing, I figured it would really make sense and, and hit home to her, and she'd be able to absorb it and understand it better. And as I read this passage, it, like, really punched me in the gut. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-5 through 5 says, You may as well know this too, Timothy that in the last days it's going to be very difficult to be a believer. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be proud and boastful, sneering at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. They will be hard-hearted and never give in to others. They will be constant liars and troublemakers, and they will think nothing of immorality. They will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good. They will betray their friends. They will be hot-headed and puffed up with pride and prefer good times to worshiping God. Now, do you think that Rob Schul's talking about worldly people, the world, the sinners, the atheists and agnostics, the unbelievers, the, the blasphemous, the apostates? No. He's talking about believers. The King James says here in verse 5 that they will have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. The Living Bible says they will go to church or synagogue, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. Don't be taken in by these people. And if you are a minister or have been in ministry in any capacity, and if you've been in long enough, ugh, that passage I just read will punch you in the gut too, because you know what? You realize that people who call themselves Christians or Messianic Jews or Nazari Jews or believers have acted that way towards you, stabbed you in the back, you've been betrayed, you've been let down, you've been lied to, you've been talked about, you've been disrespected, you've been kicked, you know. But there's this other passage that kind of come right on the heels of that, that struck, you know, a chord inside me, that reverberated in me, that gave me comfort with a tinge of sadness. David Amalek says in Psalm 27, 10, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Not if, but when. I mean, the, per the people that gave you life, gave you birth, raised you. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Adonai will take me up. The Brit Kadesha, Yeshua says that there's going to come a time where their fathers and mothers are going to betray their children. It, it, this this says that even the closest, most intimate people, your own flesh and blood, you cannot rely, you cannot depend on them. That even though they may not want to, they may not mean to, but eventually they will let me down. Ever since I was small, growing up in the church, and even when I converted to Judaism, become a rabbi, and now in Messianic and Nazari Judaism, I've seen leaders fall. I've, I've, I've been lied about, lied to, lied against. I've been talked about. I've been gossiped and slandered. I've been, I've been kicked when I was down. Um, I've been disrespected. I've been betrayed. People who said that they would never hurt me, that they would always love me, always be there for me, are nowhere in sight now. They're gone. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Did you know that back in the day, back in Yeshua's day, that rabbis, that teachers, that mentors, that the Talmudim, the disciples, called their rabbis, called their ravs, father. It was a family relationship. It was a, it was a, it was a father-son type dynamic, more so than, than teacher-student. So even when, we could say, even when my rabbi or my rav betrays me or forsakes me, 
then the Lord will take me up. The tinge of sadness comes that there is no human being on earth that you could ever rely or depend upon. But remember what Yeshua said. He said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. <laughs> when my father and my mother forsake me, then Adonai will take me up. Why were the, the prophets of old so powerful, so close to God? Why were the Sheliachim, the apostles in Acts, so close to God, so intimate with God, so, so powerful being able to channel the powers of the Ruach HaKodesh? And they were miracles because they knew they couldn't depend on any human being. They, sometimes they were forced to live in caves. They were forced to go underground. They were forced to, to be in seclusion. And the only person they had to talk to, the only one that they could rely on was God himself. And when you, when you are intimate with the word of God, when you, when you fall in line with the Torah, when you walk in the footsteps of Yeshua, our Messiah, you will alienate yourself from this world. You will alienate yourself from others. You will alienate yourself from people who call themselves believers that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof, and you will be betrayed, forsaken, let down, and beat. But Rav Shul says, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm crushed, <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm not destroyed. See, I think God is, is putting key people in these situations where they're isolated, where they're alone. Because you know what? I'm not the only voice out there that's saying this. I don't have a synagogue to go to. I don't have a church to go to. I have nobody to fellowship with. God is putting us in seclusion so that we, he will, he's forcing us to become intimate with him, intimate with his word, so that he can, he can instill within us those things that make those miracles in the book of Acts and in, in, in in the prophets, in the book of First and Second Kings, possible. Because that time's coming again. I think I'll just leave it at that. I appreciate your viewership. Thanks for watching. Um, just say, God, show me what it takes. Show me how to get close to you. Show me how to be intimate with you. Help me to become more intimate with you and walk in the footsteps of Yeshua our Messiah by walking and following the Torah. I want to be that leader. I want to be that person that you can rely on and depend upon to, 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 to perform your word, to, to minister to others, to, to be like the prophets of old, to be like the Sheliakim, the apostles in the book of Acts. Because you know what? This world ain't got much longer. Don't know how long it's got, but it ain't got much longer. And... God is putting key people in places. And you know what? It was no it was no picnic, no parade for the for the uh, apostles and the prophets. It's a lonely life. You know? Um but man, is it a is it a good life? Is it a glorious life as well? Running out of time here. Just want to share those passages of scripture with you. Hope it spoke to your heart, hope it edified you, ministered unto you encouraged you, and help you see things in a different light. Shalom and Shavuotov.